you've been invited over to your in-laws for Thanksgiving dinner. And what a sumptuous spread has been laid out on the table. The turkey is roasted to a golden brown. The stuffing is exactly the way you like it. There are mashed potatoes with gravy. And for dessert, your favorite fall recipe has been chosen. Pumpkin pie with whipping cream. As the meal begins to wind down, you gaze fondly across the table at your mother-in-law. Then rise up to your feet and pull out your wallet and wave a handful of bills. Mom, for all the love and effort you put into this, how much do I owe you? You say sincerely. The next couple of minutes is a flurry of activity and emotions. A glass of wine falls over. Your mother-in-law stands up red-faced. Your father-in-law shoots you an angry look and your children burst into tears. And next year, you find yourself celebrating Thanksgiving alone. What happened? You didn't follow the Lord's advice from today's gospel. Dear brothers and sisters, Salve Maria. In today's Gospel for Monday of the 31st week in Ordinary Time, Jesus is once again invited over to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. On this occasion, he tells his host not to invite friends or relatives or wealthy neighbors for lunch or dinner, since they'll be obliged to respond in kind, but rather to invite the poor and sick who are unable to return the favor. Now, there's nothing bad in itself to invite friends and family over for dinner. But due to our fallen, sinful, and conflictual nature, we tend to be easily trapped in the rhythm of the give-and-take mentality. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And seeing this behavior in his host, our Lord advised him to break the pattern by inviting and feeding those who are unable to repay him. As Christians, we too must learn to give without counting the cost, without expecting anything in return. Like a mother who prepares a Thanksgiving dinner for her family, she doesn't expect to be paid for it. In fact, she would be insulted if her son-in-law tried to give her a couple hundred dollars for the meal. And why? Because she made it out of love not self-interest. And so we too should strive to be generous, with no strings attached. And caring for the elderly and sick, I find, is often the best way to accomplish this, since they are unable or sometimes even unwilling to return the favor. There's a beautiful story that I'd like to share with you before we finish, which illustrates this principle wonderfully. When Donna Lucilli was young and still living at home, her father, who was a lawyer, took in a client of his who had fallen ill and had no one to care for her. Overflowing with kindness, Lucilli spared no effort in tending to every need and whim. Upon seeing her dedication and the lack of gratitude from the part of the patient, one of her siblings teased her. Lucilia, she said, don't be naive. Don't you know what will happen when she gets better? She won't even thank you for everything you did. And sure enough, when their guest finally recovered and was saying her goodbyes to the family, she hardly regarded her benefactor. As soon as she had left, Lucilia's sister closed the door and turned to her. You see, didn't I tell you? Why the effort in catering to this good-for-nothing? To which Donna Lucilla replied, unperturbed, A good deed was done, and that's all that matters. May we also have this same attitude when following our Lord's advice from today's Gospel. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you like this video, press the like button and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our videos.